Professor Michael McCarthy. This short video is about how we use corpora to study languages. If you're already familiar with corpora and the field of corpus linguistics, this video is not for you. But if you're new to the field, then I do hope you enjoy it. First, a definition. A corpus is a computer-readable collection of texts, either written or spoken. Typically written text might be texts of literature or newspapers or uh, downloaded texts from the internet. And spoken corpora will consist of transcripts, for example of broadcasts or of everyday conversations. In terms of the applications of corpus linguistics, we have dictionaries, uh, both monolingual and bilingual, reference grammars, print versions and online, vocabulary materials for language learners, materials for developing speaking or writing skills, and more specialised materials, for example, for international business communication, uh, corpus applications in translation, and in other types of cross-linguistic comparison. Let's have a look now at an example of frequency. This is a frequency list of the words which occur in the complete works of the English author Jane Austen. We see in this list here the top 20 most frequent items and they are all small grammatical words. Quite predictably the definite article the, prepositions, conjunctions, pronouns. Uh, forms of auxiliary verbs and so on. So it doesn't tell us much about Jane Austen's style. However, we can get a much better handle on Jane Austen's works, not just by looking at frequency, but by looking at keywords. And keywords are words which are statistically significant within a corpus. They represent, if you like, the fingerprint of that corpus, the DNA of the corpus. So they're very useful indeed. And when we look at a keyword list of Jane Austen's works, we see something quite different. Very, am, must, such, lady, shall, dear, herself, etc. And we are now coming down to full nouns and, and adjectives, and I was struck by number 18 there, the word agreeable. So what I can do next is, taking this keyword, I can run a concordance on it, which gives me a picture of all the occurrences of the word agreeable in Jane Austen's works, and the context around each occurrence, so that I can get a much better picture of how she uses this particular item. And when we look at these sample lines in Jane Austen's works, we notice that the adjective agreeable is often used in reference to people, to a man or a woman. So we have agreeable young lady, agreeable woman, agreeable young man. Now this would be very rare in my own personal 21st century usage. Um, and so it gives us more than just a, a statistical handle on Jane Austen's world. It actually takes us into her world of social mores and relationships, which of course her works were all about. So we're getting a bit of a cultural picture as well. Now let's take a look at how we can use corpora across languages to study uh, translation or translatability and comparisons between languages. For this we can use two kinds of corpora. Comparable corpora, which are data sets collected in similar circumstances and of a similar size in different languages so that these can be compared. We are not comparing apples with oranges, rather we are comparing apples with apples. The other kind of corpus we can use is a parallel corpus, and parallel corpora are where texts are accompanied side by side with already made translations into a target language, and each sentence in the original text is accompanied by the equivalent translated sentence in the target language. 
One way we can use comparable corpora to very great effect is to look at how a particular uh, item or a semantic notion in one language is expressed in other languages by looking at comparable data sets. And one of the things we can do with word profiling is to look at how a particular item collocates, that is, how it combines with other words in that language and what are the most likely, most frequent combinations of our target item with other words in the same language. Then we can look at how these are different across languages. Let's take, for example, the English notion of the verb to get, or to acquire, or to obtain. Well, we can look at this in, for example, in Swedish. If we look at a Swedish data set for the verb skaffa, which more or less carries the same semantic notion, we see that its most common collocate, expressed here in the biggest font, the biggest letters, is Heilhetsbild, which means an overall picture. We also see the Arbeitsstillstand, which means work permit, and then various other uh, collocations of a less frequent nature. If we now do the same for the Spanish verb adquirir, which again carries this notion of getting, obtaining, acquiring, we see a different set of collocates. We have adquirir participación, participation, adquirir conocimiento, knowledge, experiencia, experience, carácter, character. So a different set of collocations from a data set comparable to our Swedish data set. And moving on, we can do exactly the same for Welsh, where we have the verb kyle, which again uh, carries this notion of having, getting, obtaining. And now we see here kyle devnadio and its mutant form devnadio, uh, which means to get the use of, to, to use in some way. We have effaith, which is effect, and we have kavle, which is opportunity. So what we've done here with these three languages is we've compared the same semantic notion and how it's realized in that language and its profile in terms of what it collocates most significantly with. So word profiling is extremely useful for cross-linguistic comparisons using comparable data sets. <laughs> Finally, let's look at parallel corpora and the idea of translatability. Here we have an example of a parallel corpus where the two languages are Russian and Finnish. And on the left we have sentences from the Russian corpus, each of which contains the word pravda. And on the right we have the equivalent parallel sentences in the Finnish translation and we can look at how the word pravda is realized distinctly in each different sentence, each different context. Well I hope you've enjoyed this short introductory video and that you might want to take your interest in corpora further. Thank you very much for watching.